in service today. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I want to welcome you to New Life Pentecostal Church where we believe you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. At this time, Sister Bean is going to come up and she is going to lead us in some announcements. I am here by default. By default. Pastor uh, makes a horrible mess of announcements and he has now relinquished that responsibility to me to further uh, damage our uh, <laughs> abilities at making announcements. They're supposed to be flashing the announcements up on the board and I'm supposed to be able to just read them off and there's not one of them going up. All right. You can scan the QR code for the calendar of events. That's the announcement number one. Reminder, there will be no Tuesday night activities until further notice. As you guys know, we're trying to get in this building. We hope to be in it within the next four weeks. If you've not had a time, uh, an opportunity to walk through it, please do. It is uh, beginning to take shape, and we are super excited. Addiction recovery is every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Um, if you know someone needing help, and please... Brother Britt Bliss mentioned uh, a time before his conversion when he needed fellowship. It doesn't have to be a drug addict. It could be an alcoholic. That's a drug. It, it, it could be any type of addiction. It could be me and if I decide I want to get off unhooked from coffee. I could show up. Bring somebody. An, uh, bring a friend. If you know somebody that needs to come and they're, they're going to be hesitant about coming into a, a situation where they don't know people, come with them. There's nothing wrong with you come. Our, our families are addicted to, to the things of this world. What are we willing to sacrifice to bring up to get them saved? All right. There's ways to give. Please, during this critical time of, of building and growth, don't forget, pay your tithes. You can pay them in an envelope in the foyer, which is a wonderful way to pay. I still write checks and keep a check register. Givelify, download the app. All the young people are doing that. Or you can even put your check in the mail and mail it to P.O. Box 1111, Columbiana, and it will get here. And, yes, I know it will get here because we have people that mail their ties in. That's unable. People, there are people in the world, I want you to know, who believe in paid paying tithes, even if they're housebound. All right, our next. Move the mission. We, have, we are at 57, $57,500 on Move the Missions. That's a tremendous amount of money with our young people that have, they have raised. Uh, we're going to write a check and send it off, and we hope missionaries will be able to Enjoy their ministry without worrying about what they're going to eat and how they're going to get around. Next announcement. Bible reading. Please participate in Bible reading. I, and, and there may be some of you that just has the schedule of the president and you just cannot read that five minutes a day. Read, read something out of the Word of God every day. That is your road map to heaven. Please do not bring uh, blame your lack of knowledge in, in the Word of God on your pastor or your Sunday school teacher. They only have you for a few minutes every week. It is your responsibility to know, to know what thus saith the Lord. And if you're lost because of a lack of word, it's because you're not listening to it or hear, reading it. Next announcement. Download the app, Peach, Piper Peach Gospel. Make sure it's Piper Peach Gospel. And every Saturday from 11 to 1, this church or, or brother... Crowder hosts a uh, talk show, and it's always very interesting. I've listened to several of them and enjoyed every one I've listened to. Bibles for Kenya. Put, bring your Bibles and put them in. We're going to mail them to Kenya. We know that we have. We've seen one of Brother Bean's old Bibles. It was, uh, uh, he showed it to Brother, I guess you, on Facebook. Brother Bean's so now Brother Bean's got all sentimental wanting to send his daddy's Bible to Kenya. All right. The youth. Uh, no, the Sunday school teachers are selling the cutlery. 
raid a cutlery for to buy new equipment to go into their Sunday school classes. Every, unless if there is a millionaire in the building that I don't know about, we're going to need money to put new furniture into those buildings. We do not want to add old, wore-out wine into a new wine skin. We want to give these teachers the best that we can afford to give them to move in and so that they can just pick up right where they left off a year ago and just start teaching. They, they didn't leave off teaching. They've done a tremendous job under crowded circumstances in the hallways of this church. Community outreach is Sunday, September the 15th at 2 p.m. Make sure that if you can participate at all in that, please do. This is their community. We cannot reach the world if we can't reach our community. And I'm going to go a step further. If you can't reach your family, you're not going to reach your community. Go ahead. Family Fun Day is Sunday, September the 29th at 2 p.m. That means as soon as church is over, you run home and get your tennis shoes on and you grab you a hot dog and run to the field, uh, softball field over at the uh, Columbia Sports Complex and have a good time. Anybody can play ball that wants to. Come dressed appropriate. Please don't come half dressed. Don't come naked to play ball. Only, uh, just, just don't do it. Dress appropriate and act right when you get there. No food or drink in the sanctuary. This is... This part of the building has been dedicated to the kingdom of God for his worship. I am telling you, when you dedicate something to the kingdom of God, when it belongs to him, we ought to treat it like it is a, a, a royal, from a royal priesthood. We serve a God that when Uriah touched the Ark of the Covenant that was being transported, because he just touched it, he was struck dead. Why some of us are up walking around and God hadn't struck us dead, I don't know. It's just merciful. Next announcement. That's it. All right. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. And I'm not going to take open prayer requests. But I know that there are people in here who need prayer as our music is making their way forward. If you have a special a need in your body. Now is your time to come. We have ministers in this church. We have visiting ministers in this church. If you have a need and you've already told me that you need uh, prayer, make your way up to the front of the church. Come on, make your way up to the front of the church. There you go. Any minister that wants to come out and lay hands on these uh, people, anybody else that needs prayer this morning, please make your way forward. There's a lot to be praying for in this community. We have people that are sick. The COVID is going around again. Donna works at a hospital full of people that are sick and dying. She sees them every day. Pray for the people you don't even know. Pray for the people that are going to have to travel back to their home. Lord of heaven, we know, God, that you are mighty. We trust, God, that you're going to move on Jason's body. Lord, you see every need that he has. You see the needs in this congregation. Touch Joyce and Jess, God. Meet every need that they have physically and spiritually. Touch Brother Barry, God. You see the affliction, Lord. You see the scar on his head. We don't know every need or every cause of that, but we know that you do. We ask your Lord to move on the people that are vacation and keep them safe in Jesus name hallelujah worship with us this morning hallelujah we welcome you Holy Spirit we welcome you in this place let your glory rise up us we give you praise we welcome you Holy Spirit
worship with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
you, Jesus, for being our everything. Thank you, God, for being our provider. Thank you for showing up on time every time. When we didn't have a way out, you always made a way out. Hallelujah. We worship God. We exalt you. We magnify you, Jesus. At this time, we're going to have Brother Kevin come up, and he's going to help us with our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. Amen. Worship with us this morning. If you have a need, God is here to supply that need, to fulfill it, whatever you need.
Come on, everybody. Let's give him some praise for the next few minutes. Has he done anything for you worthy of his praise? Praise the Lord. The Lord is so good. Come on, everybody. Everybody give him a hand clap of a praise. There's not one person in this house that cannot praise him. They cannot give him a hand clap. They cannot give him a shout. One day, you're going to step out of this mortal body into glory. Think about that. That's awesome. He's been too good to me. I said he's been too good to me. How many of you in here is over 60 years old? Let me see your hand. Raise your hand, Ralph. I know how old you are. We're too close. We are too close to the end. We got to stay ready. We got to be touched every day of our life. My wife and I have been in ministry since about 1982. It'd be a shame right here at the last moments not to get another touch and make it home. Lord bless you. It's so good to see you guys. Amen. I'm going to be right quickly into the Word. I'll be in the book of Psalms, Psalms 92. I'm not very long-winded, but bear with me. The older I get, the slower I get. I kind of like it. If you've ever tried to keep up with my wife, it's rough. Psalms 92, verse 7 through 10. I have more scriptures, but I read that, then you can be seated, and then I'll get right into the message. When the wicked spring as the grass... And when all the workers of iniquity do flourish. Man, that sounds so much like a politician to me. That went right over some of y'all's head. It is that they shall be destroyed forever. Oh, now this is getting exciting. But thou, Lord, are the most high forever. It doesn't matter who gets elected. God's still the king. That's what he's trying to tell you. It doesn't matter. You can be a Democrat. You can be a Republican. God's still the king. And he still controls nations. Awesome. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. And all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thy exalt like the horn of a unicorn. And I shall be, I shall be, you shall be anointed with fresh oil. Look to your neighbor and say, fresh oil. Fresh oil. Sister Bean, would you pray over the reading of the word? Amen. Lord bless you. So good to have our guest. Good to see everybody here. Good to see Sister Brewer able to be back with us. Bless your heart, Sister. We pray and for him over out with knees and all of that. My wife, she's dealing with those same issues. Verses 7 through 9. I, I wanted to read that before I got into the subject. 
fresh oil. Now, in good old language that you and I can understand, verses 7 and 9 is telling us, in good old redneck terms, when all hell has broke loose in your life, when everything that you do seems to be wrong, the wicked seem to be in charge. The more I go to church, the more things happen in my life. Let me share something with you. I, I, I've counseled a lot of people uh, over my years in ministry, especially in the 23 years of pastoring. And this is one thing that I hope nobody going forward ever comes to me and says. But Bishop, you don't understand because I do. Because I've been there. Since I have received the Holy Ghost, I've had 13 surgeries since I've been in church. So I know what it's like to be broke down. I know what it's like to be broke. I know what it's like to have family issues. Now, I know y'all don't have any family issues. I'm dealing with all sanctified folks here today. Nobody has troubles. Nobody has issues. You got plenty of money. If you got plenty of money, say amen. It's awful quiet in there. The Lord is telling us here, sooner or later, it's going to come to an end. Sooner or later, he's going to pour out some fresh oil for you. Oil is one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit and his anointing, as we can read clearly in many parts of the Scripture. Now, if you hadn't been doing your Bible reading, you probably wouldn't know that. But it's in there, I promise you. Fresh oil in one's life can and will make a fresh impact in our life. When a person comes into church and she or he comes to the altar and God begins to touch them and they feel those goosebumps running up down their neck, and they feel them, their hair raising up on, on their arms. They, when it's all over and they're in an atmosphere of the miraculous, they feel like they can take on the world. They love people in church they don't even like. Oh, I know y'all love everybody, but I hear all you talk. Well, I wish so-and-so would sit further away from me. But when you're in the presence of God, even those you don't like seem to look okay. You can tolerate them. But about midweek, those people that you didn't like are getting back on that list again. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. The Bible says the anointing is a yoke destroyer. If there's ever been a time when the Pentecostal arena needs a yoke destroyer, it's today. Here's where I want to go with this message. Yesterday's anointing will not work for today's issues. Yesterday's anointing that you had is not going to help you Thursday. There has to be fresh oil in your life. And we only have church twice a week and you're battling the enemy of your soul. You're battling the one that hates your children. 
and you're only getting two services. You're depleted after a Sunday morning service by the time the midweek service gets here. That's why you battle wondering where you need to come to church or not because that anointing that was upon you on Sunday service has wore off. You need fresh oil into your life to make it from service to service. You and I need service more than twice a week. Anointed singing, anointed teaching, anointed preaching is what changes lives. Now this is for preachers, preachers only. I've seen preachers, especially evangelists, they come in, the church has been praying for a month. The atmosphere is electric. You ever been there? The evangelist gets up and all he's got to do is open up his mouth and read the scriptures. The anointing is so powerful. It sometimes impacts that pea brain of the preacher, and he, all of a sudden he feels like he's did it on his own. And in the next service, he doesn't prepare for it, or she, whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden, the service turns into a flop. What happened? That fresh oil, that fresh anointing has to be on ever song. It has to be on every sermon. It has to be on every teacher. There needs to be fresh oil to minister to the people. I tell my wife, now I know her much better than any of you here because I live with her and I have to deal with her every day. And I'll be getting up, getting ready to go to work, get my coffee, and I'll be trying to chat with her. And she'll say, really? She's over there reading the Bible, 5.30 in the morning. It's a good practice. How many of you get up at 5.30 and read the Bible? There's one. I say one. Well, she says, can you not go to work? I'm reading. She started doing that so much. I, here's what I told her. If you've been studying all week, I says, if you'll spend more time praying and less time studying, you'll get a heavier anointing. Uh, and I wasn't trying to be mean. I wasn't trying to be. But there is only so much that you can cram in these little redneck brains of ours. But through the Spirit, when there's fresh oil on what you just read, it will make an impact on you. When you deliver something to people, it will change their life. When I was a drug addict, which was many, many years ago. I was looking for somebody that could touch God for me. I finally found a man. Went to his service. I'm just going to show you what fresh oil can do in your life. I went to tell him all my troubles, and he stopped me. He says, what you need is the Holy Ghost. You need some fresh oil in your life. Come back tonight and ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I did. I went back and I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It changed me so much and so drastic and so quick. We were still in revival at this church. My mother-in-law's mother said, I've got to go see this church that's changed you so much. I'm talking about something that can take the cuss out of you. 
Jess, you ever wanted to cuss? Don't lie. Huh? So, uh, how many times? Anybody else? I know we all looking at him now, but anybody else out there ever wanted to cuss? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then somebody will be, they thought they heard the preacher say something, and they, did you say what? Well, no, I didn't say that. And then you turn around and you got a lying spirit on you. Not only did you cuss, but you lied. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to be transparent and honest. I have, since I received the Holy Ghost, I've not cussed. But I'm going to tell you, there's been a bunch of times that I wanted to. Or sink, let that sink in. There's been a bunch of times I wanted to cuss my wife. But because of fresh oil being ministered to my life, it kept me. I'm trying to explain something to you guys that when things don't go right in your life, that's normal. Don't think you're special. You're not. When things don't go right, you need fresh oil in your life. Talented singers are great. I've heard a bunch of them on the radio and TV and different places. But your talent is worth nothing to God without an anointing on it. It won't change life. It sounds good. The music sounds good. But I had rather hear my wife or some other sister out there learning come up here and do the Baptist chop. And as long as it was anointed, sister, I listened to you learn. And it was awesome because a humble spirit and a willingness to learn. Those are the kind of people God's going to pour fresh oil, fresh anointing upon. And daily, every day when she'd come, she'd work at it, she'd practice, and God's looking up, and he says, I'm going to destroy the devourer for her sake. I am going to build a hedge around her, and I'm going to pour my anointing out on her. That's awesome. Now, if you think talent will do it, go hire you some help in your churches. There has to be fresh oil. There has to be fresh oil for today's preachers. Nicely prepared sermons with great homiletical skills won't see us through our problems. It won't. Not the problems that we face today. Satan would love for us. Tiffany, how many beautiful kids do you have? Four, five, five kids. If there's ever anybody that needed fresh oil, it's a mama that's got five kids. And you got two twins over there running around like wild Indians praising and worshiping God. And just think if you had to catch them, you would definitely need fresh anointing and fresh oil on your life. But here's the thing. Satan doesn't love them five kids like you do. He doesn't love them twins like you do. As a matter of fact, he wants to destroy them. That's why it's so critical for you and I, every service, we squeeze it like we squeeze in an orange to get the fruit out of it, to get as much anointing and as much anointed power with God that we possibly can. When the Bible speaks of a yoke spiritually, the list could be very long depending on what your life is yoked up to. 
For a lot of us, it was addictions. Depression. Depression has took many a lives over the years. Chronic disease, a generational affliction which can affect your entire life. Abuse, sexual sins. Most of the people that come to God today have got some kind of yoke on their life. A lot of times they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They think they have arrived because they've got one touch. I'm telling you, yesterday's anointing is not going to sustain you for tomorrow's problems. You have to have that fresh oil every day. Many times these experiences that we deal with happen in the middle of the week. Your fresh oil that you received on Sunday morning is faded, but you fail to come back to church for fresh oil. Guess what happened? You're right back yoked up to that same old issue that you was dealing with before the Lord touched you the first time. Sunday morning's anointed has faded. You're no longer feeling it. Could have been anger that you was dealing with. And you beat your best friend up, but then you went to that Pentecostal church on Sunday and received the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, the one you beat up sees the change and forgives you. And you're so refreshed. But then something gets in the way of you coming back to church. And the next time that your anger rises up because there's no fresh oil being poured out into your life, the next time you beat somebody up, you may take their life. That happens all the time in our society today. Fresh oil is important for sustaining us. It gives us the power to deal with the issues that we have to face. Cussing. Vaping, smoking, road. Has anybody ever had a road rage besides me? Don't y'all know that's wrong? Don't y'all know that road rage is wrong? Let me ask you this. I, you don't answer me. Just think about it. Have you ever had road rage to the point that you cussed that other driver out? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I've never told this before. I've never even really mentioned this to my wife or any of my kids. But I'm going to tell this little story. I believe it was in November 1969. My father started this work. It had very humble beginnings. Family only. No help from his former church. No help from the organization that he was so proud of. Any monies that was needed to do anything around the church, Brother Bliss came out of his pocket. It was one of those sacrifices that my wife talked about. Humble beginning. Church didn't even have bathrooms in it. My God, if we didn't have bathrooms here today, there'd be an epidemic of people leaving. The spiritual battles that he fought were so very intense. Now remember this. 
He started this work in 1969. In the 60s, Pentecostal churches were looked down on. Today, everybody wants to be a Pentecostal. It's, a show, it's associated with victory. It's associated with blessings. Everybody can drive by our church today, Brother Bliss, and they see Mercedes sitting out there. They see police cars sitting out there. They see all kind of SUVs, high-dollar vehicles. And a lot of these people know a lot of you that drive them, and you're living in $300,000 homes, and, and you, you, you seem to have, they don't know that you broke and you own credit and all that, but that's another story from another time. But because we have been blessed so, everybody today wants to be a Pentecostal. Wasn't so in the 60s. Other denominal churches talked down to my father. Many times he got frustrated. He become tired. He become discouraged. One day, he got the best of him, brother. You ever been there? Oh, yeah. If we look for the success with the natural eye, it's going to get you discouraged. And there's only one way to overcome that. And that's through fresh oil. That fresh oil gives us the energy. It gives us the spiritual lift that we need to get over ignorance and stupidity that people bring to you because they are not clear and don't have an understanding of the Word. One day it got the best of him. One day he got up, he went to the church, didn't see the results that he wanted, he locked the door. I'm going to say this. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how long you've been in church. It doesn't matter if you're a bishop, a pastor, an evangelist, a deacon, a silver sister. We all got to have that fresh oil. We all have to have that fresh anointing. We have to have it every day. Well, we only come to church twice. Some of you don't even come twice. But that's another story for another day. We all have to have that fresh oil because that discouragement can land on you. That spirit of depression that wars between your eyeballs. That tells you you're not going to make it. That tells you that that cancer's going to come back. That tells you that that anger's going to take control of you. That that road rage one day is going to snap you. That you don't need to do all that shouting. You're bouncing up and down on two plastic knees. You don't need to do that. But the less we do it, the more we get in trouble. Yes, we need to do it. Yes, we have to have that fresh oil. One day, I don't know how long it was, Brother Bliss, but one day, my father got up and he decided that I am going to have a conversation with my Creator. And I'm going to pray. 
And he began to pray. And fresh oil began to come down. Fresh anointing began to rise up in him. New power to face the adversary. New power to face the criticism of all them other church folks that wanted to talk about him because he baptized people in Jesus' name. There is no other name among heaven where we may be saved. And the rest is history with this church because that fresh oil was enough to get him. My music, would you come? As they come, I know, I know every marriage in here is perfect. I think I've been married 53 years. My marriage is perfect. I fight nearly every day. That's the first thing I tell a young couple. I counseled a young couple here a few years back, and they sat down, and I said, the first thing y'all got to learn how to do is fight. They looked at me and said, what kind of, what kind of counseling is this? I said, if a counselor tells you that your love it's hotter than a pepper sprout and it's going to stay that way for 50 years, you need to shoot him. Because it's a lie. If you, if you, as married couples, don't learn how to fight, learn there's, there's things that you can say to your spouse that can wreck your marriage. I don't care how much he or she says I forgive you, there's something called a brain that sometimes won't let them forget it. And it hurts. It destroys a woman emotionally. So, in order for your marriage to stay intact, you need fresh oil. You need fresh anointing to touch your life. Kids, grandkids, great-grandkids. I got a quiver full. I got so many, they about drove me crazy. How do I deal with it? I had a great-grandkid from Tuesday to Thursday. Friday night, I had two great-grandkids. Both of them were girls. One of them cried all night. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I made my wife go to the other bedroom. Didn't help. Two o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting there. You would see a two-year-old would wear out. Eight o'clock before anybody could come, and I wanted to cry. I told my wife, I said, let me call Sharon. She had another great-grand. No, I'll suffer. I said, if you were suffering, it would be good. But I'm suffering. I'm suffering in your process. How did I get over it? Fresh oil. I promise you, it takes fresh oil dealing with your kids. As we stand, how many of you find yourself, don't answer, please. Yes, don't raise your hand on this one. How many of us find ourselves missing a lot of church? And it's so easy, it's so unique how the devil can make you forget when you hadn't had fresh oil. Forget what it was like to be bathed in that anointing as it flows down from heaven. You've missed a week. You've missed two weeks. All of a sudden, you change your perspective in your life. And then you 
you start missing, and it becomes easier and easier. Next thing you know, you're gone. And then the next thing, if you've got children, he's going to start working on them. He's going to try to get them involved in everything in the world. As she plays, every head bowed, every eye closed. If there's anyone in here that feels like fresh oil is needed in your life, it does. It, this has nothing to do with you being backslidden. I'm not trying to pin back, a backslidden state on anybody. I'm trying to encourage you if you're discouraged, if you're beat down, if you have been dealing with a chronic pain, you need fresh oil. Would you come? I'm not going to belabor this very long. If you don't need fresh oil and you feel, you feel great, you should have been shouting during the praise service. You should have been running the aisle. Sister Bean, would you pray for Sister Brewer? Sister Brewer, the only thing you need in your life is fresh oil. You just need fresh oil poured out. He sees the body and the pain. Fresh oil. Jason, you just need to be committed to God and fresh oil every service. Ever service. There's nothing like fresh oil in your life. Just want to be with you. Lord, if there's ever been a time when we together as a church body, as a church family, we Just need fresh oil, fresh anointed. Fresh anointing Just brings power into our life. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are kind. Lord, touch Brother Crowder. If there's ever a man that needs to be with fresh oil in his ministry, it's him. He's busy serving you every day of his life. Keep fresh oil burning in his life. Those that are sick among us, one touch of your oil will make a change. Lord, we want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Something's moving, something's changing. Sister Haggard. Can I, can I pray for you? Would you come forward? Brother Jonathan, I'd like for you to lay hands on her, for her family, for her family. Sister Haggard, you need fresh oil flowing in your life for your family's sake, for your children. Lord, I ask that you, the anointing and the power Rest upon this dear sister, Lord, that she can stay connected to her children and to her husband. Lord, we need fresh oil flowing through this church service. Lord, if there's ever a time when we need that anointed, it's today. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Feels like heaven on earth. 
Shikara Makoto Horamahai. Shut the Ramal. Honey, just let, let it go and God will fill you. There is lightning and thunder. There's miracles and wonders. Oh, yes. Any waters. Heaven on earth. There is a lightning and thunder. There's miracles and wonders. The sounds of many waters. Heaven on earth. Thank you, Jesus. It's so easy to receive the Holy Ghost. It's so easy to have an outpouring of fresh oil. All you got to do is surrender. You say, Lord, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. surgery. If you would anoint him, let him pray for you. Lord, we ask you to go. Put your hands upon the doctors that's going to be touching the body of one of your children. Lord, we ask that you anointed have free course in his life. In Jesus' name we pray. There is lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sounds of many waters, it's heaven on earth. There is lightning and thunder, there's miracles and wonders, sounds of many waters, heaven on earth. King of love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just think, as the song says, I just want to be with you. Pretty soon we will be. Some of you sooner than others. So you need to make sure you, you know, we, we used to sing that song, brother, have a little talk with Jesus. Some of you need to have that little talk with Jesus. It's a small church. I know where everybody lives. Isn't the Lord good? Now, I know Josh is in church right now. That boy is so regimental. I've tried to be on my best behavior because he's going to go back and watch this. So y'all tell him I was on my best behavior. Lord bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.